family, friends, and distinguished guests, please welcome our mistress of ceremonies for today, the first Latina to serve as chair of the Bergen County Freeholder Board, Jermaine Ortiz. Good afternoon. Friends, family, and distinguished guests, welcome to Senator Bob Menendez's ninth Annual Women's History Month celebration. Please rise and join me in welcoming our senior United States Senator, Bob Menendez, our keynote speaker, First Lady of New Jersey, Tammy Murphy, and this year's recipients of the Evangelina Menendez Trailblazer Award. Please join me in welcoming the Hillside High School Junior ROTC for the presentation of the colors. Please remain standing until the end of the national anthem. Please welcome the Kane University Gospel Choir, directed by Malcolm Evans for the National Anthem. Thank you to Hillside High School's Junior ROTC and the Kane University Gospel Choir. Now it is my pleasure to welcome Senator Bob Menendez to the stage to introduce our keynote. Well, good afternoon and thank you all for being here. We're thrilled to be back at Kane University celebrating Women's History Month. Uh, and because our keynote speaker has an incredibly busy day, as she does just about every day, uh, we've changed the program a little bit, so uh, I'd like to take the opportunity to introduce her now. Tammy Murphy, the First Lady of New Jersey. Uh, uh, 
Now, I mean no offense to our wonderful Governor Phil Murphy, but I have to say I am an unabashed Tammy Murphy fan. She has been a trailblazer throughout her life, from running for student office at the University of Virginia to making her mark in the male-dominated field of finance, including stinks around the world, from London to Germany to Hong Kong. Her work in the financial sector eventually led her to meet Phil Murphy, our current governor, her husband of more than 25 years and the father of her four children. When President Obama appointed Governor Murphy ambassador to Germany, Tammy's experience working in Frankfurt and Berlin enabled her to jump right in. She chaired meetings, gave speeches, hosted meals and receptions, all focused on building stronger ties between the United States and Germany, a mission I especially appreciate as the ranking member of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Upon returning to the U.S., Tammy led the creation of New Start New Jersey, a policy think tank focused on bold ideas to jumpstart the state's economy and create prosperity for New Jersey families. Tammy's experience abroad also made her a committed advocate in the fight against climate change. In her spare time, she serves as the secretary of the Climate Reality Action Fund, a nonprofit advocacy organization founded by former Vice President Al Gore. A graduate of the University of Virginia, Tammy also sits on the university's board of visitors. Now as the First Lady of New Jersey, Tammy Murphy has an office right down the hall from the governor, and there she has launched several bold initiatives which will make a real difference in the lives of New Jersey families. Most recently, she announced a new campaign called Nurture New Jersey, dedicated to reducing the infant and maternal mortality rate and ending racial disparities in health care. She's also forged partnerships with the Nicholson Foundation to hold family festivals to connect parents and anyone involved in caring for a child with a one-stop shop for care, support, resources, and relief. From finance to philanthropy to first lady, Tammy Murphy has proven a force to be reckoned with. Take it from me, I've seen her on the campaign trail. We're so fortunate to have her campaigning uh, as for me, but also championing policies in Trenton that will build a healthier, more equal, and more just New Jersey. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce to you our keynote speaker, the First Lady of New Jersey, Tammy Murphy. So good afternoon. Thank you so much, Senator Menendez. Um, thank you primarily for your friendship, um, but also on behalf of everyone here and across New Jersey for representing and standing up for us as you have done so incredibly uh, throughout your entire storied career. So thank you. I'm really honored to be here. Um, apologies that I'm shifting the uh, schedule around, but um, it's the way it goes in my life these days. Um, OK. Um, so. Um, I'm so pleased to be here as we celebrate Women's History Month. Over the past year, many of the women in this room have continued to help lead and to push us forward in the state of New Jersey, um, not least of which are the incredible women who we, whom we are celebrating today. Um, Marie and Kathy, I can't see you guys, but I know you're right there. Marie and Kathy and Joan and Nadia, um, Marcia, Elizabeth, and in absentia, Jennifer. Um, some of you are really my personal friends, as you know. Um, others I look forward to getting to know better. All of you are an inspiration to everyone gathered here today. And thank you all for everything that each of you do and the leadership roles that you play uh, on the benefit of so many people. No matter our chosen career paths, no matter our jobs, no matter where we live, we all are connected in a long line of women pioneers in New Jersey. Between education, advocacy, politics, health, and your other pursuits, all of you are being honored here today because you've made an impact on your community and continue that pioneering tradition of Evangelina Menendez and others uh, who came before you. Some of their names are written in our history books. More likely, their names are only known to us or to our communities. Women's History Month is our time to make sure the forgotten heroes and role models are forgotten no more. Today, we celebrate the source of New Jersey's strength, the women of New Jersey. 
with all due respect, Senator Menendez, I know you agree today is one day we can do that. <laughs> and equally as important, we recommit to ensuring that every woman is given the opportunity to find her inner strength. I am passionate about empowering women and our communities, and I'm focused on doing so through Nurture New Jersey, Nurture NJ, as, as uh, the Senator just talked about. Um, this is a statewide campaign that I recently launched together with partners in the governor's cabinet, our healthcare community, our faith community, and many others to reduce infant and maternal mortality and morbidity and to ensure equitable maternal and infant care among women and children of all races and ethnicities. This campaign, <laughs> this campaign is devoted to serving every mother, every baby, and every family across the great state of New Jersey. We must do this. I've met with many of you to discuss these critical issues of maternal and infant health. The facts that one, New Jersey is 45th out of 50th in the nation in maternal mortality. That two, the majority of the women impacted are women of color. And three, that if you are a black child born in the state of New Jersey, your chance of dying versus that of a white child in your first year of life is three to one. Clearly, that's wholly unacceptable. Your incredible expertise and knowledge with communities across New Jersey has led to very insightful and powerful meetings. And more importantly, these conversations have led to experiences that have given New Jerseyans access to resources they so desperately need. A few weeks ago, I hosted our third family festival in Camden. Combining all three family festivals thus far, that would be Patterson, Trenton, and Camden, and working together with the Nicholson Foundation, as well as other community organizations, we have ably provided over 1,000 attendees with access to state, local, and county resources so desperately needed. I do love to say it's a one-stop shop, so I, won't say, I, I have to throw that out there. Um, Phil, Sheila, and the entire administration are committed to healthcare equality and I have made it my personal mission to improve the health and safety of all New Jersey's women and children and to eliminate the abhorrent racial disparities in some communities. Together, we are working every angle to better serve our mothers, babies, and families. Together, we are ensuring all women across New Jersey prosper. This month is about celebrating the women writing the next chapters all of you and the generations to come. Together, we must leave our communities in a sound position upon which future generations can build. We are changing the conversation. We are creating a better future for our mothers, children, and all people across the state. I say we because we're all in this together. Phil and me, together with you, this is our shared future. I know there will be roadblocks in the way, but we will overcome them. And we will write new chapters in our history. And because of everyone here today, those chapters are going to be written by strong and determined women. This is the future that the coming generations, a healthier generation, will celebrate when they celebrate Women's History Month in March. Thank you, Senator Menendez for your leadership and for gathering us all here today in celebration of these exceptional trailblazers. Thank you for vocally carrying on in your mother's honor. Thank you all for the work you do every single day on behalf of the great state of New Jersey. Thanks for having me. Thank you, First Lady. I'd like to take this time to recognize elected officials here with us today. Former Governor Jim McGreevy. Freeholder Andre Satin. My colleagues, 
Freeholder Vice Chair, Mary Amoroso, and Freeholder Tracy Zer. Mayor Dalia Vertrice, Councilwoman Patricia Augusta, Councilman Stephen Yellen, and Councilwoman Susan Poet. If I missed anyone, I, I apologize. I welcome everyone today. Now please join me in welcoming a familiar face here at Kane University, President Dr. Dawood Farahi. Thank you, Freeholder Ortiz. I am in the worst spot I could possibly be, following the First Lady and then being followed by Senator Menendez. I should have just quit this job <laughs> when I had a chance. So thank you all for coming to Kane University, and thank you, uh, First Lady. Uh, she's an amazing woman, somebody who succeeded in her life, and now she's given to many others to succeed the way she did. Senator Menendez has been a longtime friend, a strong supporter of the mission of this university, and an amazing non-stop fighter for the state of New Jersey. So welcome, Senator. <laughs> and this award named after the Senator's mother is an amazing award. I've been part of it a few times. And the ladies, the trailblazers here, have done fantastic work, and we're sure you will do more of it. So instead of me giving you a speech, and they told me, don't be a, uh, a commercial for Kane University, but <laughs> it's part of my job description. <laughs> so here it comes, and much shorter than than average. This university is over 60% women and one of the five most inclusive universities in America. And our students succeed. And I'll give you some examples. In the field of mathematics, they told us women in math doesn't match right? Let me tell you about Emily Garcia, who came to us as an EOF student, an Equal Opportunity uh, Fund student, which is students that don't have the financial means to go to the other places that they wanted to go. They came here. She's graduating in three years, and she's going to get a PhD in mathematics free from the University of Arizona. And there are six others who are getting doctoral degrees in mathematics, the largest number of any state university, including that other one in the state of New Jersey. <laughs> and here's another thing. In 2004, we created the New Jersey Center for Science, Technology, and Mathematics Education. They told us minorities and women, math and science, come on, man, that's not going to work. We have over 160 students in that program now, and they have a four-year graduation rate second only to Princeton. And 52% of those students are women. And 51% of America are women. And my mother was a woman. So don't forget who the boss is. <laughs> thank you for coming to Kane. And again, congratulations and thank you, Senator Menendez, for choosing us as the place to give this amazing award. Thank you very much.
I would also like to acknowledge Plainfield Mayor Adrian Mapp, Council <laughs> Councilman Steve Hockaday, <laughs> Councilwoman Joylette Mills Ransom, <laughs> and Councilman McGray. Thank you so much, Dr. Farahi. You did a great job. <laughs> now it's an absolute honor to introduce someone who has always been a role model and inspiration to me. I have known him since I was a child growing up in Hudson County, and I couldn't be more proud of a senator who has been fighting to empower and elevate women since he was elected to public office from introducing the Equal Rights Amendment to ensuring women can make their own health care decisions to fighting to keep immigrants together and fighting for equal pay for equal work. Senator Menendez has consist consistently stood up for women's rights. Growing up, Senator Menendez saw the struggles his mother faced, and now he has made it his life's work to ensure that all daughters and granddaughters live in a more equal and just society. So ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome to the stage our champion in Washington, our senator, and my dear friend, Bob Menendez. I wish you had forgotten how early you knew me. <laughs> Thank you again. Thank you very much. Thank you, Freeholder. I, I wish you hadn't mentioned how early you knew me when you were a child, so. <laughs> Today uh, marks our ninth annual Evangelina Menendez Women of Distinction Trailblazer Awards, and I want to thank all of the leaders, all of our distinguished elected officials who are here, who have come to honor our honorees, the volunteers, organizations like Planned Parenthood, Action Together New Jersey, and so many others, who have uh, helped make it a great success. I want to thank our uh, MC, the first uh, Latina ever to be the chair of the largest county in the state of New Jersey's Board of Chosen Freeholders, Jermaine Ortiz. Jermaine Freeholder, thank you very much. I want to thank President uh, Farahi for graciously welcoming us back to the campus. This is an extraordinary university. He is an extraordinary leader and has only brought it to new heights. So thank you, Dr. Farahi, for welcoming us back again. I appreciate the Hillside ROTC for presenting the colors, as well as the Kane University Gospel Choir for that beautiful rendition of the National Anthem. And uh, soon after, after I'm finished, you're going to get to see the Honey Bees Double Dutch Team, uh, which uh, when you see it, it's a great performance. Uh, and they have won all types of awards, and maybe later today they can teach me how to jump just one rope at a time. So finally, I, I also appreciate uh, the First Lady of New Jersey, who had such a schedule today, but... Uh, was gracious to be our keynote speaker. She's an example of women leading the way in our state. Today we honor incredible women from across New Jersey with the Evangelina Menendez Women of Distinction Trailblazer Awards. Let me tell you a little something about each of them. You'll hear more about them later on, about this year's honorees. They are trailblazers, they're gas, uh, glass ceiling breakers, and history makers who make New Jersey proud. Our 2019 Women of Distinction uh, are Maureen Bliston, the president of the New Jersey Education Association, <laughs> Catherine Brienza, the founder and president of JOLT USA, Joan Dublin, president and CEO of Metropolitan Health Network, S. Nadia Hussein, maternal justice director at Moms Rising and co-founder of the Bangladeshi American Women's Development Initiative, Marcia Marley, the president of Blue Wave, New Jersey, Elizabeth Meyer, the founder and lead organizer of the Women's March of New Jersey. And unfortunately, our, our last uh, honoree uh, took ill today, but we honor her and we'll make sure we have a moment with her. Jennifer Scumil, who is the New Jersey State Teacher of the Year from Morris County. Let's give them all a great round of applause. 
And you'll hear a little bit more about each of them, and you'll hear from them in just a, a, a little while. Today we celebrate Women's History Month at a time when women across America are rising up, speaking out, and making history each and every day. Think about the events of the past two years or so. Following the 2016 presidential election, women across America rose up to make their voices heard. Here in New Jersey, a mother named Elizabeth Myers, one of today's honorees, decided that while she couldn't attend the Women's March on Washington, she could organize one in Trenton. Weeks later, 17,000 New Jerseyans were marching for women's rights, alongside four to five million people across America who together claim the largest single day of protests in American history. Of course, the Women's March was just the beginning. Months later, the Me Too hashtag earned its place in history as women broke their silence about sexual assault and harassment they faced in their lives, and especially at work. Last September, Dr. Christine Blasey Ford came before the Senate Judiciary Committee to bravely share her experience of sexual assault at the hands of now Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh. She had shared her concerns about Mr. Kavanaugh confidentially months earlier. But once those allegations became public, she faced a choice between staying silent or speaking her truth to the American people. Dr. Ford had nothing to gain by revealing her identity, but she inspired the nation with her courage. I had hoped the Senate majority would not repeat the mistake from years ago when Anita Hill testified about the harassment she endured at the time working for now Justice Clarence Thomas. But unfortunately, we couldn't muster the votes to block the Kavanaugh confirmation. But still, I want to be clear. To those here today who have survived sexual assault, and I want you to know that I still believe Christine Ford, and I believe you as well. That's why. That's why I recently joined my friend and colleague, Senator Patty Murray, to introduce the Security and Financial Empowerment Act so that no survivors of domestic violence are forced to stay in dangerous situations just because they can't afford to take, to take a day off of work. In the last two years, record number of women have run for office. Across the nation, nine women from both parties are now governors. And here in New Jersey, we have our first ever African-American woman serving as Lieutenant Governor, a former woman of uh, distinction here, <laughs> Sheila Oliver. A record 127 women are serving in the House and Senate of the United States, 106 Democrats, 21 Republicans, and 47 women of color, an all-time high. Once again, a proud grandmother named Speaker Nancy Pelosi holds the gavel in the U.S. House of Representatives. So I won't try to emulate Nancy's clap, but something like that, but, uh, but uh, in recent years, I've come to learn, uh, not just as a senator, but as a man and as a father, it's not just my job to speak for women or fight for women, it's my job to listen to women, to follow their lead when they are leading certain movements, and to fight alongside women. That's why we're celebrating the achievements of New Jersey's women today. Nine years ago, I created the Evangelina Menendez Tr Women of Distinction Trailblazer Awards as a tribute to my mother, who passed away of us after a heartbreaking battle with Alzheimer's disease. I named the Trailblazer Awards after her because of all the trails that <clears throat> she blazed for me. Trails that made it possible for a son of refugees to rise to become one of 100 United States senators in a nation of over 320 million people. <laughs> for that truth. The truth is that my entire career in public service has been guided by the values that my mom instilled in me. Values like compassion, sense of community, and courage. And believe me, my mother was courageous. She was born in Havana in 1919. She grew up under Batista's dictatorship, and she didn't buy Castro's empty promises. She dreamt of a better life for her children in the United States. At that time, it was my sister and brother. My father didn't want to leave their home. Few people do want to leave their country. But my mother believed in the promise of America. 
1953, her courage led them both to leave everything they had behind in Cuba for a new life in the United States. Earlier today, when we listened to that powerful rendition of the national anthem by the Gospel Choir, one that calls America the land of the free and the home of the brave, well, my mother taught me that sometimes to be free, you must be brave. I see her bravery in today's immigrant families, even as this president's policies threaten to tear them apart. The thousands of immigrants with temporary protected status here in New Jersey, who together are the moms and dads of nearly 9,000 U.S.-born American children across our state. The dreamers, who may be deported to a foreign country they've never known, but continued to contribute to the only country they've ever called home. In them, I see my mother's courage. So when I speak out against an agenda that tears families apart, when I fight policies that threaten to deport homegrown talent to foreign lands, when I carry on the, tri on the fight for truly comprehensive immigration reform, I'm fighting for courageous immigrants like my mother. When my family arrived in the United States, nothing, neither a job or housing, success, there was no one here. There was no guarantees. Yet as a young boy, I saw my mother blaze trails for me. Every morning, she headed to a crowded factory to work as a seamstress. My mother was a hard worker and a smart woman, and the factory owner knew it. Over the years, he kept giving her more responsibilities, eventually the responsibilities of a floor manager, but never the pay earned by her male counterparts. It wasn't fair, and it wasn't right, and it didn't just hurt my mother, it hurt my family as we struggled to make ends meet. So today, when I fight for equal pay, for equal work, when I fight against workplace discrimination, when I reintroduce the Equal Rights Amendment that New Jersey's own Alice Paul drafted nearly a century ago, I am fighting for my mother, for my daughter, for my granddaughter, and all of our daughters in the days ahead so that they can live in a more just country. Now, my mother didn't understand uh, much English, but every night she would sit me at the dinner table after she worked at the factories all day, came home, cleaned, cooked, and cleaned up, and then she said, sit here uh, and read your homework to me. And I would say to her, Mama, you don't understand what I'm going to say. She goes, that's what you think. Sit here and read your homework to me. I don't think she ever understood what I said. She nodded as she went along, listening to what I had to say. But after such a long day at work, I couldn't believe this is how she wanted to spend her evenings. But nowadays, I know why she did. You see, my mother may have been Cuban, but she had American dreams for me. She didn't care that we were poor because she knew that in America, I had access to a public education, the birthright of every child in this country. You could say her beliefs rubbed off on me because my first foray into politics started at school. As I began my senior year, I learned that my grades, this is in high school, qualified me for the senior honors program, but that you had to come up with $200 for the books. My parents were poor, we lived in a tenement, I didn't have $200 for the books, and I couldn't believe that in a public school I'd be barred from being in the honors program, so I created such a fuss that they gave me the books, told me to shut up, and put me in the honors program. <laughs> Uh, but I couldn't accept that my friends, many of them who also had the grades and the activities but didn't have the money and like me, unlike me didn't sign anything, were denied entry just because of their financial status. So I decided to do something about it. I launched a petition drive to reform the school board, which was appointed at the time. We knocked on doors, we collected signatures at the age of 19, got thousands of signatures, put a referendum on the ballot, passed the referendum, and then at the age of 20, uh, I ran and won a seat on that very board. So today, when I fight back against the Trump budget's massive cuts to education, when I fight to ensure every student has a chance to fulfill their God-given potential, no matter the disability or challenges they face, no matter what happenstance in life they were born into or what zip code they live in, when I fight to keep weapons of war off of our streets and out of our school, I am fighting for the dreams of mothers like mine. As I said before, As I said before, growing up, my family didn't have much, and yet my mother still would invite neighbors from our tenement to uh, dinner. 
And I would say to her, my mother, it's just, just about enough to go around. And she said to me, hijo, which means son, we may not have much, but we still have more. And so long as we do, we're going to invite people to share what we have with us. So today, as the president tries to pay for his lavish tax cuts for corporations and the wealthiest 1% by slashing the Medicare and Medicaid that our seniors and disabled citizens and the most vulnerable depend upon, you won't see me, see me sitting in silence. I'll continue fighting for the dignity of all working people because it's how I was raised. My mother's values were at the forefront of my mind as she had a long, long struggle with the Alzheimer's disease. I'm sure that many of you here understand the hard work of caring for an ailing parent. The intergenerational challenges my sister and I faced raising our own children, getting them through college while fighting to make sure our mother could afford the prescription drugs and health services she so desperately needed. As my mother fought this battle at home, I was fighting a battle in Washington, a battle to give every American access to affordable health care. As someone who is one of the co-authors of the Affordable Care Act, I'll be the first to say that we should expand upon it. But that's not the debate in Washington these days. Instead, this administration is doing all it can to sabotage the Affordable Care Act, and by some measures, unfortunately, it's working. After President Obama signed the law in 2010, we saw more Americans gain health care coverage year after year. Yet under President Trump's watch, more and more families are going uninsured. Well, going backwards is not the American way. So I'm never going to stop defending a law that helps seniors afford their prescription drugs, that ended discrimination against pre-existing conditions and discrimination against women simply for being a woman as a pre-existing condition, and that expanded Medicaid to over half a million working people here in New Jersey who have as much right as anybody else to get health care in the greatest country on the face of the earth. So as we defend our gains, I know the fight for universal coverage for all Americans is far from over and you will never see me give up on that fight. So even during my mother's long goodbye, she shaped who I am and what I fight for. That's why I'm fighting for the American Family Act, a bold new plan to cut child poverty in this country in half. That's why I stand up for Planned Parenthood funding in the face of President Trump's illegal gag order. That's why I just introduced the Reproductive Rights and Human Rights Act to defend women's health across the globe, no matter what. I'm never going to stop fighting so that women like my mother, or your mother, or sisters, or daughters, or granddaughters may someday live in a world where women face no limits, where no person faces discrimination because of who they love, how they identify, what God they pray to, what they look like, or where they're from. A nation in which the rights of women are respected and the trails they blaze are celebrated. My mother was a trailblazer in every sense of the word. Her name, Evangelina, harks back, harkens back to Eve, the first woman, and an angel for the angel she was. I couldn't be prouder that my daughter, Alicia, a talented trailblazer in her own right, decided to name my granddaughter, Evangelina. At two years plus, we do not know what her future holds, but we, uh, and we don't know what trail she'll blaze, but what we do know is if we continue to work and if the women here today who are being honored and those who will follow in their footsteps continue to fight, Evangelina will grow up in a nation that is stronger, fairer, more just, and more equal, thanks to the extraordinary women we are honoring today. Thank you very much, and we look forward to having the award ceremony. Thank you, Senator. And I also wanted to remind you, you were a child when you started to, uh, becoming a public servant, so it's all relative. <laughs> Thank you for those wonderful, empowering words. Thank you so much. I also wanted to uh, thank the senator for inviting me as your MC. And it was a privilege this year when you came and swore me in as chairwoman. I thank you again. I'm excited to welcome the Honeybees, a national and world champion double Dutch team based out of Jersey City for a performance. 
So here we are, we welcome the honeybees.
Thank you to the Honeybees for that amazing performance. I think they deserve another applause. I'd like to welcome Senator Menendez and his family to the stage to present the Evangelina Menendez Trailblazer Awards. Well, what about the honeybees, huh? I tell you. I can dance, but I can't jump rope. So. Uh, so thank, I couldn't do both of them too. Uh, so uh, this is my son Rob, uh, who has joined me every year to honor his grandmother. And my daughter is about two minutes away, but we're gonna uh, move ahead. So our first honoree is uh, Marie Blistam, who is the president of the New Jersey Education Association, a tireless advocate for the interests of teachers, students, and families. As president of the NJEA, Marie draws upon her years of experience as a high school special education resource center teacher in Washington Township's public schools. Previously, Marie served as president of the Gloucester County Education Association, took on leadership roles in several county committees. As NJEA president, Marie now chairs several committees devoted to political action, strengthening local associations, and more but she's the founder of New Jersey's Special Education Stakeholders Coalition, a trustee for the Brain Injury Association, a member of the Governor's uh, Committee on Special Education. Marie has devoted her career to strengthening our public schools, to helping teachers be able to fulfill their roles in making sure that every child has the opportunity to reach his or her potential. It's in part because of Marie's work and those who she gets to lead that New Jersey's public schools rank at the top of national performance. Marie, we're honored to present you with the 2019 Evangelina Menendez Woman of Distinction Trailblazer Award. Thank you so very much, Senator. I do have to say, Dr. Ferrari, that um, you did have a daunting task following uh, the First Lady, but I think mine is more challenging following the honeybees. <laughs> they did a great job. I first want to thank everyone for being here in this auditorium, and of course, Senator Menendez for honoring and elevating women and the role that women play in our society. My sincere congratulations to the following our, my, follow, uh, my fellow honorees, truly you are women of distinction, you are making a difference, and I am honored to share this stage with you. I also want to thank my family members who were able to be here with me today, my son Jeff, his wife Tracy, both of whom are teachers, my other daughter-in-law Christy, my two beautiful granddaughters Juliana and Emily, and my life partner, my soulmate, truly my better half, another social activist, and another teacher, my husband, Bob Liston. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Senator, I have heard you say many times that it was your mother who inspired you to know the real value of education. And you have continued to demonstrate your fearless leadership, your commitment, your dedication to our children, to our profession, and to public education. We do have a free quality public education in this country, and it is not a hope. It cannot be a hope. It is and it must always be a promise because I, as you, truly believe that it is what distinguishes this country from the rest of the world. And I am proud to stand here that because of you, because of people who came before me, because of my fellow educators throughout the state, because of my fellow officers, Sean Spiller, Vice President, and Steve Beatty, 
uh, secretary treasurer. In fact, we are rated at the top. Ladies and gentlemen, we are number one in the United States for the number of students taking advanced placement courses. We are number one in the United States with their advanced placement test scores. We are number one in the United States for working to close the achievement gap. And we are at the top for the best quality public schools. Our task is daunting. I often think about the teacher astronaut Krista McAuliffe who said, we touch the future. Our members every single day take one million students across this state. They nurture, they protect, and they educate our students. Our members active and retired are from pre-K through county college, and they are comprised of aides, bus drivers, cafeteria workers, custodians, child study team, librarians, maintenance nurses, security, tech, secretaries, and teachers. And they have earned and they deserve the respect and the recognition that this word brings. And so on behalf of my 200,000 fellow members of the New Jersey Education Association, I very humbly accept this award and I thank you again. Let's hear from Marie Bliston again. Thank you. And now we have the full team here. This is my daughter, Alicia, and my granddaughter, Evangelina. Hi. <laughs> She's normally more precocious than that, but in any event. Yes, talking about you. All right. Our next honoree is uh, Catherine Brienza, founder and president of JOLT USA. Uh, and a Bergen County nonprofit focused on empowering people through engagement and education. There's a theme that runs through today's honorees. These are all women who have created movements, whether in the empowerment of individuals in our political process, in our education system, in our healthcare systems. They're all women who have created movements. Catherine is an example of that. Through its community arm, Ridgewood Jolt, Kathy has an, uh, connected everyday citizens with opportunities to get more involved in the issues that matter to them, including by having Jolt co-sponsor events like the Hackensack March for Our Lives, the Town Hall on Gun Safety, and Keeping Families Together. During the 2018 election cycle, Kathy built a passionate team who reached tens of thousands of voters and recently launched Jolt's sister site, 15 Minutes for Change, which helps citizens make daily action calls to public officials. Building on Jolt's tenet that education is empowerment, Kathy recently founded New Jersey Civics Outreach to prepare more high school students to become engaged citizens. Kathy is also a member of the Ridgewood Green Team, the board of directors of the Alpine Learning Group, a preeminent center for those on the autistic spectrum. Prior to her advocacy work, Kathy practiced commercial real estate law, raised two children with her husband of 28 years, Dr. Patrick Roth, and catch these words speak to the power of everyday Americans to shape our democracy and to change the course of events. We're honored to present her with the 2019 Evangelina Menendez Women of Distinction Trailblazer Award today. Hi, everybody. Wow, this is weird for me. Um, I have to follow Marie, and she's a, obviously a very good and veteran speaker, which I am not. Um, thank you, Senator, for this honor. I mean, it, we know how much your mother meant to you and how she was embodied strength and, and support, and um, I'm really humbled to be here and getting this reward. Um, 
When I think of trailblazers, I think of the, I automatically think of the suffragettes. And who were the suffragettes? But just a bunch of ordinary women who really wanted the right to vote. And then I think of the feminists in the 70s, and who were they? Well, just a bunch of ordinary women that wanted control of their own bodies. And then I think of today's feminists, and who are we? We're women who still are fighting and agitating for a seat at the table. Um, personally, I came of age during the second wave of feminism, and I watched on TV in awe as these women, uh, as a force, fought to effect change. And at 13, I really wanted to be a part of that. Um, fast forward to today, uh, when our country is, is facing perils that we couldn't even imagine from within our own government, and um, I found my movement, and I found my movement in the community in Jolt. And Jolt's just a bunch of ordinary people who came together and said, you know, we need an activated, educated citizenry if we are going to save democracy. So um, I, um, Jolt holds educational events. We've done a lot of get out the vote stuff. We've t uh, tried to teach people how to get more in contact with their legislators and be more involved in democracy on a daily basis. And we've held rallies, et cetera. Um, I am grateful every day to the members of JOLT, particularly to my board, some of whom are here, um, for their passion, their energy, their commitment, their steadfastness. Um, you ladies have become some of my best friends. And um, JOLT has proudly and unequivocally supported you, Senator Menendez, um, because we, have, we see and we know you as a consistent, fearless, reliable leader and somebody we so desperately need at, at these times to stand up to what's happening in Washington. Um, you know, you're, you're, you constantly use your voice and empower all of us when you do so. Um, Jolt knows it can count on you. So thank you, Senator, for re recognizing the importance of civics grassroots activism. And, um, on, and thank you to my fellow honorees for all of their inspiring work. We all do our part, and it comes together as a you know, great whole, hopefully. And um, on a personal note, I want to thank my mom, who's here, for uh, teaching a shy kid to use her voice, uh, to my husband for dealing with all the crazy upheaval, um, to my son for going to the Women's March without being told, um, and to, right? You know? to my entire family for always being so uh, on the same page and supportive and loving, and to my daughter who shows me every day what the uh, next generation of, uh, sh the, 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 shows me every day, I'm sorry, the strength, tenacity, and determination of the next generation of women. So thank you, everybody. Let's hear it again for Kathy Brianza. Our next honoree is a healthcare leader who delivers results. Uh, Joan Dublin is president and CEO of the Metropolitan Family Health Network. A few of her many, many accomplishments include quadrupling the number of patients served, opening a third location, launching a pharmacy, and opening a state-of-the-art dental suite. Joan began her career as a nurse and went on and earned a master's uh, degree in public administration from Seton Hall. After working for several different health organizations, she joined Metropolitan Family Health Network as Chief Operating Officer in 2007. I don't think anyone would be surprised, if you know Joan, to know that within three months of arriving, she was named President and Chief Executive Officer. Her leadership took a fiscally challenged federally qualified health center, I know because I was involved, that was at risk of closing. Uh, and closing on thousands who depended upon it for their primary health care, and turned it around to deliver high quality health care to thousands of children, mothers, fathers, and seniors. This April, Joan will begin serving as chair of the New Jersey Primary Care Association, the advocacy group for New Jersey's federally qualified health center that delivers to millions of New Jersey 
New Jerseyans qualified health care. And I can't wait to see what she achieves on behalf of families and patients as the new chair. Joan, it's an honor to present you with the 2019 Evangelina Menendez Woman of Distinction Trailblazer. Thank you, Senator, and good afternoon. It is my great honor to receive this Evangelina Menendez Trailblazer Award. I am humbled to be in the company and recognized by Senator Menendez for this accolade inspired by his mother and to be in the company of such distinguished women and, and um, Admirable women, I want to take this opportunity to thank you, Senator, publicly for your leadership and tireless work to improve access to community-based health care. I believe most people are simply not aware of how much you have done. Over the years of your congressional service to help thousands of families and individuals who have come through our doors at Metropolitan Family Health Network and the doors of community health centers throughout the state of New Jersey and the entire nation, you are the unsung hero. The quiet but strong leader and the true champion of decent, affordable, and accessible community-based primary care for all Americans. Thanks to you, Metropolitan Family Health Network has received resources which have enabled our professional healthcare team to launch and deliver medical and dental services and a range of preventative and primary health care that are very important to Hudson County and the community. We have been able to expand our services until 9 p.m., increase behavioral health, improved access to prenatal pediatrics and oral care. Often, after serving the health care needs of hundreds of people each day, I say to myself, Thank you, Senator. We could not have done this without you. I would also like to thank my family here, uh, my son, my cousins, friends who came from as far as Washington, D.C. and Florida, and colleagues as well for all of their support and all of those who have contributed so much to Metropolitan Family Health Network and who have helped us make the success. Senator, it's a great honor to receive this award. But the greatest honor of all is the privilege of working with you and your incomparable professional staff in helping keep New Jersey's communities and families healthy and thriving. Thanks again. Let's hear it for Joan Dublin. Before I introduce our next honoree, uh, I want to thank our sign interpreters, Christine and Kylie. Thank you so much for doing a great job. Our next honoree is Smita Nadia Hussain, the director of the Maternal Justice Campaign for the national advocacy group Moms Rising. Nadia is a lifelong activist focused on empowering a marginalized communities. Today she leads Moms Rising's work on maternal health, mass incarceration reform, and police reform. Nadia is the co-founder of the New Jersey-based Bangladeshi American Women's Development Initiative, sits on the boards of the ACLU and the New Jersey League of Women's Voters, is a founding advisory board member of Inspiring South Asian American Women, which encourages South Asian women to run for office and become civically engaged. And if that were not enough, Nadia also serves on Bloomingdale's Economic Development Commission and Mental Health Stigma Task Force. She was a member of Governor Murphy's 2018 Law and Justice Transition Committee 
and she's been recognized on Insider New Jersey's list of 100 up-and-coming millennials. The daughter, of, the daughter of a United States service member, Nadia grew up in many communities across America before graduating from Rutgers University and adopting New Jersey as her home, and we are lucky that she did. Nadia, it's an honor to present you with the 2019 Evangelina Menendez Women of Distinction Trailblazer Award. So I actually didn't prepare a speech. I, I really wanted to speak from my heart today, so I'm timing myself. Uh, first of all, I really wanted to thank you, Senator Menendez, for this most incredible honor. And I wanted to thank my fellow honorees. I look up to you, some of you I just met today, and I'm so inspired, and I hope that we can be in touch to do even more for our wonderful state. Uh, you know, it's, I wanted to share this. Five years ago, I just moved back to New Jersey from California, and I was sitting in the audience over there uh, with my fr uh, friend Tom Heyer and Beth Heyer, who are my guests today. And I was about uh, eight months pregnant. I was a couple months pregnant. I was definitely showing. And this was one of the first events I, I was able to go to. I had just gotten back in the state. I, was in I wasn't as uh, connected to activist opportunities, so I really didn't know what I was going to do or how I was going to help. And I remember being so inspired by this event hearing uh, Senator Menendez talk about his mother, and I don't know if it was the pregnancy hormones, but I just felt, I felt your mother. I felt your love for your mother. I felt my child in my belly. I didn't know if it was a boy or a girl. It turned out to be a boy who was, you'll hear screaming throughout this event. Um, but I just thought, I just thought to myself, if I could do something that could make my son feel about me, how you feel about your mother, then I've truly accomplished something in my life. So I do want to give that, and I want to say that, that inspired me. In a million years, I never thought I would be on this stage getting an award. Five years ago, I never would have thought I would have been on this stage getting an award in my pregnant self <laughs> back then. And I, I want to say that, you know, I see myself as a vessel. I'm a representative. I'm a vessel and representative of my mother and all of the women whose names aren't on plaques, who, who aren't up here getting an award, who are the unsung heroes who prop us up. I'm a representative of my mother who immigrated to this country from Bangladesh looking for a better life for her whole family. And she sacrificed everything and struggled to this day to give us the life that my sister and I have um, were able to get in this country. I, I'm the vessel, I'm the represent representation of my grandmother, Nargis Begum, who wanted an education in Bangladesh but was married off at 16. And she always swore that her daughters would be educated and her grandchildren would be educated because she did not get that opportunity. Um, I'm here um, representing my mother-in-law, Gloria Melendez, um, who passed away last fall. Um, and you know what? She came from the country of El Salvador during a brutal civil war that the U.S. had a hand in, and she brought her babies, my husband, across the border, alone by herself, for a better life for her children. And they did become citizens, but you know what? When she was coming with coyotes in the darkness, with all the fear in her heart, she made it here. And so I'm telling you that I do the work I do, standing up for marginalized communities, with Moms Rising, uh, doing the work I do with the Bangladeshi American Women's Initiative. A lot of the work we do actually is about supporting undocumented families in our communities. I see, when I look at the faces of children in cages, when I see the families desperate across the border, I see my family. I don't just see people who are separate from me. They are me. Those are New Jerseyans. Those are human beings. And that is my family. So all the inspiration of women, and we talk about Women's History Month, that is what drives me every single day to do the work I do. Moms Rising has a million members. We work on multiple issues, including family separation. And let me tell you, Senator Menendez, every single time we have a bill that we got thousands and thousands of petitions on, you're, you're already a signer to that bill. Every single time. I open up and I look to see, I'm like, well, do I need to call my own senator? No. I almost never need to call my own senator unless I'm calling you to say thank you. His name is always on the bill. There was a bill called the Detaining Pregnant Women, uh, sorry, it's the um, de Stop the detain uh, Detainment of, in of Pregnant Women Act, and it's for 
women are having babies and losing babies in detention centers. And he was one of the first signers to that act, no questions asked. So I thank you for your advocacy all the time to always stand up. When I co-founded the Bangladeshi American Women's Development Initiative, I saw that there was no support for Bangladeshi American women in this country, and I wanted to start something, anything, so we could support each other. And we did. There was a woman who was undocumented. Her husband got picked up by Trump uh, when Trump did the executive order. In the middle of the night, they were, they were just devastated. We worked with that family. They unfortunately had to leave and go back to Bangladesh, but we were there, and we will continue to be there. And all the women, uh, everybody in this audience, not just the women, I hope that you stand up for our community members and realize that we're in, in here together. We're one big human family, and that I can't do it alone. Senator Menendez can't do it alone. We need you every single day in your communities, standing up for the women, standing up for the families and the children, because we are under attack, and the only way we could do it is if we're unified and we do everything out of love. Thank you. Let's hear it for Nadia Hussein. And so somebody's not worrying. I have somebody's very elegant glasses up here. So uh, whoever it belongs to, I'll put it in my pocket and you, you'll have it. Our next honoree is Marcia Marley, president of Blue Wave New Jersey and Succeed Together, two nonprofits based in Montclair. As president of Blue Wave New Jersey, Marcia is a passionate advocate for progressive policies who has mobilized thousands of voters behind causes like universal health care, environmental justice, marriage, equality. Blue Wave has helped hundreds of progressive candidates across New Jersey at every level of government. And Blue Wave was actually the first real progressive organization whose advocacy on progressive issues were well before their time. Marcy also founded Succeed Together in 2009 to help low-income families in Essex County overcome the challenges they face. Together, Succeed Together, to today, Succeed Together is a respected nonprofit known for connecting families in need to free programs and resources. Marcy also serves and has served on a wide range of boards from Citizen Action and New Jersey Policy Perspectives to the Montclair International Film Festival and the Essex Community Land Trust. Marcy attended graduate school in economics at UC Berkeley, taught macroeconomics at New York University, and contributed to significant research on economic inequality. After having her children, her work as an economist led her to travel around the world, from Africa to East Europe and beyond. And that worldview makes her a passionate advocate for America's role for freedom and justice and for the rights of women across the globe. She currently lives in Montclair with her husband, and we are honored, Marcia, to present you with the 2019 Evangelina Menendez Women of Achievement Award. Thank you, Senator Menendez, for this honor and for all the work you do. And I'll never forget going to your office and advocating for universal health care, and you were one of the strongest sponsors of ACA. And I have been supporting you ever since that day. It is a privilege to be included among these distinguished fellow honorees. I congratulate you all. I want to start by acknowledging two individuals that have made my activism possible. First and foremost, my life partner and best friend, Peter Rappaport. His love continues to nurture and sustain me. His generosity keeps me, my nonprofits afloat, <laughs> and, his, <laughs> and his intellect keeps me honest, and that's an important characteristic for your partner. I also want to acknowledge my dear friend, Teresa Gillarducci, who I have also known since graduate school. Sister, 
Your accomplishments have been an inspiration to me and your support invaluable. Thank you. Many inside and outside of the Beltway labeled 2018 as a year of the woman. And we should be proud of both the record number of women elected last year and their diversity. What a breath of fresh air, right? We should also remember how they were elected. They were elected because we fought for it. We marched for it. We ran for office in record numbers. And most importantly, we voted in record numbers. But as people have mentioned, 2018 also reminded us that we continue to live in a social and political landscape where women's voices are not given equal weight and are often not even believed. Unfortunately, discrimination remains alive and well. In the halls of power, we still remain woefully underrepresented. So today, as we commemorate what women have accomplished and the extraordinary women who have achieved over the years, and we stand on their shoulders, let's also resolve, all of us, and commit to continue the fight, not just for equality, but for equity. Equity across gender, race, class, ethnicity, and sexual orientation. Equity means affordable childcare and housing for all. It means health care equality that the First Lady talked about. Equity means strong protections against sexual harassment and domestic violence. Equity means justice for women of color and all immigrants. Finally, as we see on the back of our program, let's pass the ERA. It's way past time. And I want to thank Senator Menendez for sponsoring it in the Senate every year. This is the sixth year, right? Thank you so much. So what did we learn in 2018, ladies? We learned we have power, the power to vote, advocate, and mobilize. By using that power, together, we can create a more tolerant, inclusive, and fairer society and ensure that hate and bigotry, discrimination, do not prevail. Sisters. Let's use our power wisely to inspire and convince others to join us. When we do, as M Michelle Obama said, there is no limits to what we as women can accomplish. Thank you. Let's hear it from Marcia Marley. Our next honoree, Elizabeth Meyer, is founder and lead organizer of the Women's March on New Jersey. She initiated the original uh, inaugural Women's March in Trenton on January 2017. 17,000 New Jerseyans uh, ultimately responded, marching for women's rights. And she remains deeply involved as a lead organizer for the 2018 and 19 Women's Marches. A native of Wayne, New Jersey, Elizabeth lives with her husband and two young daughters in central Jersey. Indeed, it was Elizabeth's desire to build a better future for her children that inspired her to become an activist. Beyond the Women's March, she helped organize major demonstrations throughout New Jersey over the past two years, uh, like the People's Climate Rally and the Families Belong Together March. And she was an advisor for students who organized the March for Our Lives New Jersey in Newark. It is her proven leadership to mobilize people into action to change the course of events that we honor today. A proven organizer and leader, it's no surprise that Elizabeth is a sought-after speaker 
in, for example, the Because Women Can series hosted by Congresswoman Bonnie Watson Coleman and the keynote speaker at the Women's Political Caucus of New Jersey Inspiring Women to Lead initiative. Elizabeth, we're honored to present you with the 2019 Evangelina Menendez Women of Distinction. To uh, Senator Menendez and his family, thank you for your steadfast support, no matter what the issue. To be accepting an award in your mother's memory, Senator, is such a distinction. You have been a bastion of resistance, resilience, and fortitude, especially over the last few years and through a grueling campaign. As your constituent, thank you. Although I am most grateful for this honor, this recognition truly does not belong to me. Today, I am merely a symbol of New Jersey women who have taken action and refused to remain quiet. Over the last three years, I have organized side by side with more than 100 other strong, worthy, distinguished, phenomenal, no-nonsense women, younger and more seasoned. <laughs> Without their grit, resources, and skills that they brought to the table, any event that I was a part of would not have been. This belongs to the thousands of New Jersey women who have taken to the streets, the representatives' offices, and the voting booths in the pursuit of the future that they want for our children, communities, and our country. It is for the women who have educated themselves, made calls, wrote postcards and emails, talked to their family and neighbors, advocated for candidates, and ran for and will run for office. I see so many of you in the auditorium today. Remember when people wondered years ago if women suddenly being so engaged politically would just fizzle out? or if we'd have any impact, two words, blue wave. <laughs> New Jersey women, we get things done, and it's onward to 2020. This is also for the women who have been fighting these same battles for decades, for the women on whose shoulders women like me stand for the sacrifices that they have made, the injustices that they have incurred, the persistence that they have demonstrated, and the power and inspiration that their voices and struggles give to us if we only choose to listen. And lastly, this belongs to my family. You are both my backbone and my heart. To my daughters, Charlie and Penny, you inspire mommy every day and make me a better person. This is for the countless hours I was on my laptop and phone, all the movies you got to watch because I was on conference calls. <laughs> for the dinners, family time, and goodnight kisses that I missed, for the patience and support that you have shown me. There is not a woman in this room who is more proud of their daughters than I am of you. Keep using your voice. Never dull your shine for anyone. I love you no matter what, always. To my husband, Jamie, for your true partnership, for your devotion to our family, our daughter's futures, and for cultivating and nurturing my identity as a strong, dignified woman for myself and as the role model for our girls that I promised I would be on our wedding day. You will always be the yardstick by which I measure the integrity of every other man in the room. Thank you. Which one of your daughters asked me about Molly? Oh, that's Charlie. Charlie? Let's hear it for Elizabeth Meyer.
And just so you know, the, uh, the uh, fruit does not fall far from the tree. Uh, one of uh, Elizabeth's daughter, Charlie, first thing she asked me after she got introduced to me is, did I, meet, did I read the Mueller report yet? So, <laughs> true story, true story. Of everybody I met today, uh, from beginning of my day on, she is the first one to ask me if I read the Mueller report. And the answer is no, not yet. Uh, finally, uh, we, we had one more honoree. Unfortunately, she fell ill today. But I still want to recognize her and, and read why uh, we honor her. Uh, for the nine years that I have uh, done this program, if the teacher of the year is a woman, I have always included the teacher of the year because uh, I think it's an extraordinary profession. Uh, it is one that uh, unlocks the potential of each and every one of our children in a system that is an all-taker system. Public education is an all-taker system. Every child who walks through the door, whether they are the most brilliant child, whether they are physically challenged, whether they are emotionally challenged, it is an all-taker system. And in an all-taker system, which is one of the great democratizers of our society, and I do believe that sets us apart from the rest of the world, having a teacher of exception is someone who, is ex who, someone who we should recognize. So our final honoree today in absentia is Jennifer Scomiel. She is this year's New Jersey Teacher of the Year, a career and technical education teacher at her hometown high school, the Morris County School of Technology. Jennifer always knew teaching was her life's purpose. As a little girl, she remembers playing school with her younger brother, whom she needed to bribe to pay along. Jennifer earned her BA in English secondary education from Montclair State University, a master's in teaching with a focus in special education from New Jersey City University. After starting out at Costley Middle School in East Orange, she returned to her own high school and has been at the Morris County School of Technology ever since. A believer in the school's unique approach, Jennifer prepares her students to pursue careers in social work, child psychology, and education, including with real life experience at an on-school, preschool, and engagement with experts in the field. A believer in service, Jennifer advises several student groups as a lead teacher, provides mentorship, provo provides professional development opportunities to her fellow educators. Looking at Jennifer's career, we're all reminded of the incredible work teachers do every single day. And Jennifer, it's an honor to recognize you today as well as a 2019 Evangelina Menendez Woman of Distinction Trailblazer Award recipient. And we will make sure that we get Jennifer her award. Thank you all. I know that our masters, mistress of ceremony is going to come back out, but thank you all for coming. Thank you to the exceptional women and their families and friends. Uh, my mother is looking and she would say, bien hecho, well done. Thank you very much. Before we end the program, I would like to acknowledge and thank the Union City Girl Scouts for attending our program today. Thank you so much. And I would also like to thank, again, the honorees and congratulate you for those exceptional speeches that are so memorable. And thank you so much to the Menendez family and for this wonderful event today. And we thank everyone for coming out today. This concludes our program, and have a wonderful evening. <laughs>